Welcome everybody. Uh, we're excited to be here today kicking off these virtual Cooking with Cots and Cooking with Edible Wow demos as part of the Soup City Family Event 20, 2022. My name is Jeremy Abbey. Um, I'm John Piazza. And we are from Soil to Service, uh, an incredible partner of Cots. We love working together and really just uh, mutually beneficial mission to uh, help the community. And really we focus with Soil to Service through education, all about food. And so today we wanna to focus this demo really on how to stretch your food buck. Because we all know inflation is crazy, food prices are going crazy. And so really we wanted to take some common items that you can find still actually available in grocery stores and really some low cost items and really how to stretch that dollar. Keep food out of the garbage essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. And so one of our partners is Make Food Not Waste. They were a supporter of the Soup City event as well and uh, donated some awesome dried beans that they got rescued from a dumpster basically. Um, you know, overproduction in the industry sometimes happens and people don't buy dry beans and so um, vendors actually will discard them and donate them. And instead of throwing them out, groups like Make Food Not Waste and Detroit Food Rescue go around and collect these foods and then donate them to other organizations to really help the community. Yeah, and the food is not bad that they collect. It is just, you know, everything has an expiration date on it. And so when you look at that expiration date, they can't serve it in a restaurant. They can't sell it as a purveyor, but yet it's still good. The dried beans don't go bad. So they need an outlet, and that's where Make Food Not Waste comes in. Yeah, so this demo, we're gonna talk, and we're gonna cover three different soups that we're gonna make for you. So we're gonna do a chicken tortilla soup, we're going to do a mulligatoni, and we're going to do a cream of broccoli soup. And the cream of broccoli soup, if you supported Cot Soup City 2021, you'll actually find the recipe in the book. So how exciting is that? Because I uh, gave this recipe to the uh, event last year. So all of this is really focused on these wonderful things, these rotisserie chickens which are really um, that convenience product. Most grocery stores, delis, bodegas kind of have them available where the pre-cooked chicken, you know, you're in a rush, you need, you got five, six dollars to feed a family, um, a great quick meal. And what we want to showcase is how to utilize this to get even more um, bang for your buck. Right, so you buy two and your family only goes through one, one and a half, what do you do with the leftovers? Do you put it in the garbage? This is a good opportunity to make a nutritious, uh, a delicious meal for a second day. So what Chef John is going to start doing um, right now is taking this rotisserie chicken and breaking it up. And so you get the legs, the thighs, the breasts, the wings, you know, white meat, dark meat. Uh, we did one earlier just for the essence of TV and those type of things where, um, you know, this is dinner for tonight, but what do you do for tomorrow? You know, maybe you have a family that doesn't like dark meat and doesn't like meat on a bone. So what do you do with the legs? So we'll talk about that a little bit. What do you do with those wings? We'll talk about that a little bit. And then, you know, you have the breast meat. If there is any leftover, um, you can incorporate that into a soup as well that we'll show um, as we progress through this demo. So what Chef is gonna do is he's gonna break apart this chicken and take the inside, the carcass, right? The bones of that chicken and put them into a uh, sauce pot, pretty decent sized stock pot, and then really just kind of break it up and cover it with cold water. So the body, the cavity of the bird, we'll add the wings. And so when we do this, well, we're, there's a little meat on there, which is no big deal. All that meat does is add flavor. And if you tune into another demo, you'll find out the difference, why we wanna leave some meat on there, just to enhance the flavor of what we're making here, which is essentially a rotisserie chicken stock. And so with that, we're gonna cover it with cold water. And for essence of time, we'll pretend that these bones are just covered with cold water. The thing to remember with this is it's already cooked. Thigh bone. Oh, look at that, he's getting the thigh bone out. Yep, stretching yep. all that dollar. We're stretching that dollar. Um, two things you want to remember with this. One, it's seasoned already. Most rotisserie chickens are pretty heavily seasoned. So there's really no need to add any salt to this. Um, 
to begin with. You might want to increase the salt later as you make your soup, but you want to keep your stock pretty neutral in flavor. And it's already cooked. So what we want to do is extract some of this flavor as much as we can into that liquid. So we put it on a low flame, or low heat in the world of electric, and we did it ahead of time. And you end up with this really, really nice looking rich brown liquid that's just loaded with rotisserie chicken flavor. And there is the meat that has been removed from that carcass. So with this, we can then, I cook this for about two hours. The longer you cook it, the different flavors extracted come out, you build more collagen, you get more, uh, more uh, nutrients out of the bones the longer you cook it. But about 30 to 45 minutes with a rotisserie chicken stock, you can actually build enough flavor to get some of that back flavor that we'll talk about, um, that umaminess, that mouthfeel that we love in really good soups. So we're going to take this um, rotisserie chicken stock, which is one chicken, that's all we used here, and we're going to turn it into like three different soup ideas that you can do. So, so that one stock that we're making from that one chicken carcass is going into three soups. Three different soups. That's yeah. excellent. That's yeah. excellent. So Chef John's going to start cutting up some mirepoix. And mirepoix is basically your traditional soup vegetables. Most people are familiar with it's in chicken noodle soup. Where what this does is it really enhances flavor. And we're going to use that in our second soup. So what do you, what do you got in mirepoix? Mirepoix consists of traditionally a carrot, an onion, and celery in a proportion typically 25%, 25%, 50%. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this onion, I'll cut it up nice, because in the soups that we're about to present, we wanna use this uh, in the soup, and it will be in the finished product. If we were just making the stock, as Chef Abby was talking about, I may rough chop this, put it right in there, it doesn't matter what it looks like, we just make it wash, wash it, and then put it in. But since we wanna serve it, we do want it to look nice and we'll make it a little fancier cut. We'll put it probably into a medium dice. So it doesn't really matter when you're making soup. It's like there's no rules, there's no boundaries when you have soup. If you don't like onions, don't add them. You know, it's really a matter of the more we cook, the better health we'll have, and that's a whole nother demo and lecture series that we could get into that we're not going to today. But really just cooking at home is really, it's better for you. You know, there's less sodium, there's less preservatives, anytime you, uh, and it's just overall better health and wellness. And so if you don't like carrots, don't add them. It doesn't matter. And so that's those kind of things where don't let recipes bind you. We clean these peels. I just washed them so they really can go into the stock. Vegetable scraps into stock, all that does is build flavor. Uh, there's a debate professionally among chefs of whether onion skins go in stock or not. Again, another lecture series. So let's make some soup. I'm a fan. <laughs> I am not. See, we could debate all day. Um, so let's make some soup with a chicken tortilla we'll start with. So a can of black beans. Um, if you can't find black beans, sometimes you can't find them, use red beans. Use garbanzo beans. Use navy beans. Uh, beans, really good protein source. Uh, you know, vegetarian, non-animal sourced, obviously, uh, but also low cost. And so I have here about half a can of uh, canned black beans go in there. And then a can of corn. Look how easy this is. About a half a can of corn. Add that in there. And then I like crushed tomatoes. If you want to use diced tomatoes and juice, that works. It doesn't really, really matter. Um, I like crushed tomatoes because there's a little bit of texture, but they're not too big, so they cook quickly. And this is one of those large cans, but it has 28 ounces, so probably like a third of it, maybe a half of a smaller can. And that's really going to be the base of our chicken tortilla soup. And what we want to do is just season it up. So I have some chili powder that we're just going to Sprinkle in there. If you don't like chili powder, don't use it. Got some paprika. And got just a little bit of cumin. This brings in that, oh, it's not even open. How about that? <laughs> um, brings in that uh, Southwest feel. Might taste like a taco, so some people like cumin, some people don't. Use as much as you want. 
So in that, we could then take, maybe we have, oh, you got that nice boneless thigh over there, don't you, Sean? I do. Could you dice that up for me? I'd love to. And we'll throw that in there. And uh, we'll give that a little bit of stir. Here's the mirepoix. Vegetables. Oh, love it. Beautiful. And then we take some of our rotisserie chicken stock. And what are we going to do? We're going to string that right into our soup. Oh, maybe. We're going to turn this heat up a little bit. And all we want to do is bring this to a boil and then let it simmer. And then maybe, you know, you're helping your kids with homework. Then you can go help your kids with homework, try to figure out that new math thing. And uh, in about a half hour, 20 minutes, you're gonna have a delicious soup. So we'll let this come to a boil and we'll let this cook. But how easy was that? That took me, what, three minutes? Okay, maybe five, because we had pre-opened cans, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that was the magic of TV. I was able to open those cans before Right, right. And then we'll throw in a little bit of chicken just for uh, some added protein and a little bit of garnish and some flavor and some mouthfeel. And then we have a beautiful um, chicken tortilla soup that's cooking away. So we're going to start the other two soups and then we'll finish that up with some cool garnishes. Sound, sound like a plan? It sounds like a plan. So I'll put this chicken on the side here. Right, so we'll have that ready to go. So the next soup, let's talk. Let's talk about mulligatawny. What a great name that is. It is. It's a fun name. Tell, tell us about mulligatawny. So mulligatawny is from uh, India, and it loosely translates to fire water. Um, so mulligatawny is this really, really, really cool, uh, traditionally chicken-based soup. But what I wanted to kind of bring this to the attention of everyone is it's a great way to use up day old rice. So here I have some rice that's cooked and we're setting up and one of the lovely employees here at Cod said, what do you do with day old rice? It gets all hard. It's perfect for soup. And this is a really, really cool um, creative soup that you know might be a little unknown. Um, but it is very, very uh, flavorful. And again, you can play with it and go whatever direction you want. Um, so it is a, a chicken base, so we're going to use our rotisserie chicken stock. And this time around, what we're going to do, one of the key components to mulligatawny is the use of an apple. I think that's fantastic in the recipe is that there is actually apple in the soup because using a green apple, typically you have a little bit of tartness. It offers a little bit of sweetness. Of course, there's nutrition in it, but it takes and elevates the soup into something you've never had before. That's so good. Yeah, and so a green Granny Smith apple provides a little bit of that tartness. Again, it doesn't matter. What I wanted to kind of bring to the attention in this demo is what we can do with the apple core. So there's really no reason to throw them out anymore. So when we have our rotisserie chicken stock, maybe you don't use it all right away. So what you can do is you can freeze it. So put it into small deli containers, put it into ice cube trays, put it into whatever you want. And then maybe when the fall season comes around and apples are a little bit cheaper and you end up with a surplus of apples, then you can actually, you know, you got a bunch of kids and they like apples in their lunch, you can actually save your apple cores, toss them in a little bit of lemon juice, and when, then on a nice Sunday afternoon, you can make a mulligatawny. And with the apple cores, what we actually are going to do is we're going to put them in a, in a pot and we'll actually infuse their flavor right into the rotisserie chicken stock. And so with this, we're also going to add a little bit of our mirepoix. So we end up with a beautiful piece of apple like this. One of the things that's excellent about this soup is it really doesn't matter. It's your preference on whether you want the skin or not. It's excellent. It adds additional fiber. So I always like to just chop it up and put it right in there. Uh, it cooks fine uh, and adds uh, actually even a little more chew to the soup. Again, another debate as to whether you use skins or you don't. Turn this heat up a little bit. And what we want to do is just let this cook for a little bit. And when it comes to a boil, we'll get some of that sweet and tart flavor infused into the actual broth. And then through that process, you know, maybe you're taking your uh, chicken legs and we can take our chicken legs and then we can actually throw them right in there as well. 
because what that's going to do is then loosen up those tendons that are in there and that chicken meat will just fall right off the bone. Really, really nice. And then we can take our day old rice. The longer you cook a mulligatawny, the thicker it'll get using the starch that's naturally in that rice. And the secret, you know, to any Indian inspired cuisine really is curry powder. And so you can make your own curry powder, but you know, I like, we're talking ease at home, right? So maybe you like curry powder, maybe you don't, you can go as heavy as you'd like. And so we'll put that in there. The thing with curry powder that you want to remember is you want to let it cook out so it doesn't get too pungent. And so the longer you cook this, you know, the more flavor it'll have. One of the things, though, is you're looking through your spice cabinet. Now, we have a variety of things, and, and Chef uh, Abby even said, oh, wait, this isn't even open yet. One of the things you want to look at your spice cabinet and see how long you've had spices in there. If they are old, if they're a years old, you probably want to discard them because while they're not bad to consume, their potency or their flavor has been reduced tremendously. And so you're not making the rich... Uh, flavorful soup that you're interested really in making because of the spices are just getting old. So take a look at that too as you embark on uh, having some excellent soups. All right. So there's our garnish chef. Fantastic. So I'm going to let this come to a boil um, and then you want to let it simmer for 10 or 15 minutes but we're not going to bore you with all of that. And then when about five minutes, 10 minutes before we serve it, we're gonna throw in the diced apples so they don't lose that crunch. And one of those things we wanna remember is mulligatawny, fire water, so we're gonna definitely throw in some crushed red peppers. Again, that spice level, it's up to you. You want it really hot, you can throw in some more. You want it less, don't use them, it's up to you. So chef has a trained hand. Obviously, he's uh, taking the spice right out of the container and shaking it over your soup. If you don't, uh, like me, I would never trust myself. I might accidentally go, hmm, or you have a kid that bumps your arm and all of a sudden your entire hot pepper container is in your mulligatawny soup, and then now that's bad. So what we want to do is you could even measure out what you want or put it into a side dish, a small bowl, and then go right over your soup and put in that measured amount. It takes away some of the uh, mishap opportunities that could happen when you're making soups and measuring spices. Right, right. So the last soup that we want to talk about is just a cream of broccoli. And while I'm going to get that started, Chef is going to talk about our chicken tortilla soup that's been cooking away. Oh, yeah, let me take a look at that. Yeah. It's looking really good. And what we want to do is add some garnishes to it. So this is just like taco night, you know, where you could put up a bunch of different garnishes and then people can help themselves or you can so do I'm it sure all. You can see this, but this is becoming uh, cohesive. This is all joining together. Look at those black beans, that corn. This smells, no smell vision today, okay. but man, this really smells good. I think Mr. Zuckerberg is working on that right now with his metaverse. When the world is uncertain, having a focus can make everything clear. At Gallagher, our focus is community. It's a simple word that can mean many things. The places where we live and work, the industries where we do business, and the new connections we form around new ways of interacting. As your community insurance broker and consultant, Gallagher's purpose is to help you move forward with confidence by managing your risk, by helping you foster a healthy, thriving workforce, by holding ourselves to the highest standards of ethics, and by bringing together global reach and local expertise to help your business your community through every challenge you face. So whether your doors never closed or you're looking to return and rebuild, our focus remains where it's always been, on you and your community. Because that's what it means to build confidence together. This week's episode of In the Kitchen with Cots and Edible Wow is brought to you by Gallagher and by Cots board member Ina Fernandez. For more information on family-focused February events and to learn more about Cots, visit us at soupcity.org. Thank you for watching. So as our soups are cooking, we have the chicken tortilla. Chef John is going to talk a little bit about 
garnishing as I start working on some broccoli. Okay, so garnishing for the tortilla soup. Uh, so tortillas, we think a little bit of Mexican. It's got some beans and corn in there. So let's garnish that with some typical uh, Mexican style garnishes. So what's typical in uh, Mexican food? You got lime, avocado, green onion, and cilantro. And so one of the things that I'm going to do that I wanted to make a mention earlier is that I'm putting gloves on. Now when you're cooking at home, not necessarily a big deal, but when you're preparing for others in a professional kitchen, one of the things you want to do is anything that's not going to get cooked, you want to have a glove on. It's uh, protecting the ready to eat food. So when I was working with the um, apples, when I was working with the chicken, all of that's going to be heated as we're cooking it over there, but these are going to be sprinkled on top or squeezed in, and so we want to make sure that we keep my hands away from that food as I prepare it. Awesome. Awesome. So as we're uh, getting close and moving in that right direction, we just want to, we're going to plate up our soups and kind of present them uh, for the demo. So we are going to start kind of moving some things around and getting them out of the way. And so broccoli, you know, you spend a lot of money on broccoli because the price has gone up. I can't believe the price of broccoli. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. So, you know, you eat, many people eat the crown of broccoli and you get these nice little florets. So maybe the, maybe your kids love broccoli. Um, you know, you cook that for the vegetable for the, for the night, but then you have all of this beautiful stem that you're paying money for. So instead of throwing that out, you can actually use this and it's got just tons of flavor in it. And so using our rotisserie chicken stock, you know, you just want to, let's say, I brought your knife, Chef. Absolutely. And I had a question awesome. too. Did you wash the cilantro? I did. Very nice. Thank you. Thank so you. So let's pretend that we actually get all of our broccoli florets off and uh, you're stuck with this stem. So what we can do is we can, you know, cut it up into smaller pieces. Uh, you can cut it up into not so smaller pieces, depending on how much time you have. And if you recall the, mul the mulligatani, we had the mirepoix. And so what we wanted to do was we took the broccoli stems, so a little bit of mirepoix, and some of that rotisserie chicken stock. And all we did was put that together and we let it cook for about 45 minutes to an hour, because these are pretty hard. And we want to get them really, really mushy, if you will. And then maybe you had some broccoli florets left over from last night. So we could throw those in there. Or maybe you had a little extra from a crudite tray that you had a birthday party or whatever and had some guests over and you're just tired of eating broccoli. What's a crudite tray? I'm sorry. You had a vegetable tray, veggies and dip. Isn't that the fancy name? For the fancy her? name, crudite. Yeah, sorry. Um, so we throw those in there. And we let that cook for a little bit. And then we're gonna let that come up to a boil just to cook the broccoli florets and uh, the broccoli stems. I cooked that, started that before so we don't have to wait 45 minutes on film because that's boring. And then into that, we're just gonna add a little bit of heavy cream. And if you're watching your diet or anything else like that, you don't have to use heavy cream. You can make a puree soup opposed to a cream soup. So we add a little bit of heavy cream to that and we can always adjust it later, but we want to make sure that, you know, this time of year, it's cold outside, that creamy, that richness that gives us a sense of comfort and really makes us just warm and fuzzy inside. And all that's in there is really, you know, low protein. We have chicken flavor, but we don't have any actual protein. So eating this with maybe some uh, rotisserie chicken left over and or maybe just a salad with a hard-boiled egg then you get a nice balanced meal that's really really comforting in these wonderfully cold times it's a beautiful nice skills chef well, thank you very much it's beautiful just getting ready to slice this avocado so we have uh before you do that if okay. you don't mind we have our rotisserie chicken thigh that was diced up we're going to throw that in the tortilla soup and then we have our diced apples that we're going to throw into our mulligatawny as chef shows you how to process an avocado so it's always a little bit of a trick to see because it's a guesswork right you never know if that avocado is what it's going to look like inside if you get them from the store and they're very very hard that's okay right so what you want to do is also purchase a banana or two if you need it relatively quickly because 
the bananas will help the the gas from the bananas that they give off will help avocados ripen faster and so this one feels just to the touch i can just slightly make a dent into it so i'm feeling optimistic that this is going to be green on the inside if it gets a little bit softer i may be thinking about guacamole right but this is perfect well done on the purchase chef well how about, done how about that this side we're going to leave uh, the uh, the pit in there this one what i'm going to do is actually we're going to make a diced avocado as the garnish so i'm taking this skin which is relatively hard i take my knife and i'm just going to score the inside on just running the knife on the skin while it's still in there turn it do it again Then I get a spoon. Yeah. All right. We can scoop out an already diced avocado. Beautiful. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. There we go. So now we're ready for our soup. So chicken tortilla soup, right? We probably need some tortillas in there. And so we have some tortillas here that this was just a brand new bag, but you know, sometimes you get to the bottom of the bag and no one wants to eat the crumbs. So this is a great utilization for those little bits of tortillas that might be in the bottom of the bag. And so let's take a look at our tortilla soup. One of the most important things we wanna do is make sure that we taste this um, which, you know, most people want to make sure you taste it and there's enough salt from that rotisserie chicken stock. You know, I think it's good. We like this little festive bowl here that we're going to use. So we put a few ladles of chicken tortilla soup in there. Oh, look at that. It's got a little spice. Tastes pretty good. Should we fill it up? Fill it up uh, because then Let's we're going to add just a little bit of acid to it. Can it take a good squeeze oh, of lime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely a little lime to just kind of wake it up. Yep. So we take that lime. I check for any types of pits in there. We're just going to do a little squeeze. You can do this not just in the bowl if you don't want to. You can actually do this in the main pot if you're making a larger uh, batch of it. Uh, and then I'm going to grab this spoon right here since we already have it with the avocado. And I'm going to take some avocado. I'm going to put it just to the side. A little sprinkle of the green onion. And then we're going to top it with the cilantro. And we can crush these up. You can get strips. You can get all, especially if you're using the end. They're probably not all going to be perfect rounds. But we just happen to have, we'll take it out of the top of the bag. And then there you go for service. And now you have a delicious tortilla soup. Very nice. Very nice. So our broccoli has come to a boil. Um, and we had that nice cream that we added in there. And then one of the tricks that is uh, just essential to soup production in any household is a hand blender. Uh, we'll talk about that one in our next demo. Um, so all we're gonna do is blend this up a little bit. And when you use a hand blender in a hot pot like this, you do want to be very careful and short little bursts to start so it doesn't spray all over the place. You can carefully add this to just a regular home blender. Look at that, what they call in molecular gastronomy, broccoli foam. Yes, you're making broccoli foam. Nice. I'll stabilize it and it will be good. Yeah. One of the things to be careful of, if you don't have a hand blender, you do put it in your um, your food process, I'm sorry, your blender, because uh, you don't have a hand blender. When you're putting a hot liquid in there, be careful when you, if you turn it on full blast and it will spray and spray all over and the hot, it will burn. So be careful when you do that. 
one of the things that happens is the, the stems are so fibrous, one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like to eat them, but what that fiber does is it helps thicken up that soup. Uh, so it really makes a good mouth feel. So again, just a really, really simple, if you wanna cook it down and get it more uh, like thicker, we could do that as well. But we'll just you know pour this right into the bowl. So again, you could do this the night before and just heat it up. But that base of that flavor is you know, that rotisserie chicken stock with some broccoli stems, we just extended to another dinner. Right, and you can see it's a light green. Uh, it's not a, a, a dark military type green, so you know it's still good broccoli. And you can add a variety of different things to that, even other vegetables uh, that you want. You know, things that you might have a little chunk of carrot somewhere, you know, you can actually throw that in and, and it'll just change the color a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's a, you can be so creative with soups. These are just foundational uh, techniques uh, that we're showing you in some really good soups. But yeah, go creative and find out what's in that fridge and be able to add it. And so our final soup that we're going to present is just our lovely mulligatawny, which is looking really nice. This one I always like to taste really quick just to make sure the acid and the balance and the curry is nicely cooked out. Remember the tartness from the apples, and I love it. You know, sometimes people, sometimes it depends on your household whether they go for the thigh and the leg or they don't. You know, some people love just the breast. This is a great opportunity. You cooked that thigh or that leg meat and that thigh meat. It's soft, it's tender. Uh, it's a great almost garnish to this soup. So one thing we do want to do is try to, I like to fish out all the, the apple cores that are in there. And so when we find those, we just kind of pull them out. You can do this before or after. Um, that way you're not eating apple seeds, uh, which are not the best for you. And then you grab a ladle. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna use a spoon. Yeah, that's a hearty soup. And then, uh, yeah, we go with our mulligatawny. So again, if we cook this longer, um, it would actually get even thicker as the rice breaks down. So you can do that. Some mulligatawny recipes, if you YouTube it or Google it, will uh, tell you to thicken it up. So that's another method that you can do. Uh, yeah, one of the ways to do that is as you began this soup, you start where you're sweating your vegetables, you do that with a little bit of flour, or you start with butter, and then you add a little bit of flour to that, making a roux. Uh, and then when you add your stock, it starts thickening it up at that point, not totally relying on the rice. In this particular recipe, we just relied on the rice. Uh, and so the longer you cook it, the thicker it gets. And I absolutely love a little cilantro with chicken rice and curry, so nice little cilantro garnish. And uh, yeah, thank you all very much for spending uh, a Monday afternoon with us, evening and uh, hopefully you got some soup ideas on how to stretch your food dollar and uh, stop throwing some so much food away and you know maybe uh, extend it onto another couple meals uh, once again chef john piazza i'm jeremy abbey from soil of the service thank you for your support check out cooking with edible wow check out cooking with cots enjoy the programming for the rest of the month and uh, thank you for your support thank you this week's episode of In the Kitchen with Cots and Edible Wow is brought to you by Gallagher and by Cots board member Ina Fernandez. For more information on family-focused February events and to learn more about Cots, visit us at soupcity.org. Thank you for watching.